Starbucks is a coffee and prepared foods retailer with stores predominantly in the USA, Europe and China. Yes, yeah, so it has a market cap of $83.6 billion, a P-E ratio of 30 and a dividend yield of 1.74%. On my recent India trip, I was extremely happy to find a Starbucks in uh, Indira Gandhi International Airport in New Delhi. And it, it really feels as though you're coming home <laughs> when you're traveling and you find a recognizable brand. And I think that's the power of Starbucks is that wherever you are in the world, when you see a Starbucks there is that kind of, I'm going to just go and sit down and have a Starbucks and regroup. Yeah, I mean, these guys have absolutely commoditized coffee. They've done such a good job at it. And it's, it's, it really is Howard Schultz who's been at the helm of, of that business for for forever and when he left it was a disaster and he came back <laughs> and it was fabulous again and now he's becoming a strategic advisor yes to like, the group. like like it's, like Kevin, it's Hedewick. Like Kevin Hedewick. Yeah, yeah I thought about that I thought it was very interesting um, and then you can have a CEO who kind of focuses on the day-to-day -day kind of grindy stuff but yeah overall commoditized coffee um, so many stores all over the world I mean just to give you an idea of the the size of the sheer volume of the of the existing business they are planning to open 2,100 outlets in 2017 mm. 2,100 that is to a huge that in number huge I think famous brands entire restaurant base is around 2,400 exactly so they're opening up a famous brands every year in Starbucks or and as we've seen here in Rosebank and with Taste Holdings, they're not just simple little coffee stores. These are big, exciting, of technology driven hubs exactly. where you can go and drink coffee. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and, that, and you can see that from the clientele. Um, apparently, the, the stores in Rosebank and, and Mall of Africa are full of RT types typing their, <laughs> doing their blogs. And, and let me just remind everybody that uh, has watched our Taster Holdings portfolio going lower and lower and lower and hurting us, that it is this long-term Starbucks exposure and their rollout plan that has us steeped in mm, taste. Unfortunately, Taste have to actually put up that money and build mm. these expensive stores, and I think that's what's putting pressure on them. Just going back to, you know, the brand and also the innovation of this business. Um, you know, they decided about four or five years ago to get involved in mobile payments. Now they are the single biggest mobile, mobile payment app in the world through, through Starbucks. So, you know, you can get your loyalty points. Everything is done, you know, through your phone. Your credit card is loaded like with Uber. So it immediately comes off. You can even pre-order so you don't have to wait in the queue. And then you rock up there and there it is waiting. The with convenience your name on it. factor, which is what everybody wants today because time is the most important commodity yeah I mean you have the app and you have a Starbucks in every block in the United States so <laughs> <laughs> combine those two and you never have to go without coffee you'll be you'll never be tired again um, in, in Joburg it's a little bit different you have to walk a little bit and maybe well look for your caffeine fix I've been struggling today <laughs> um, but yeah I mean just other things that they've been doing as well um, they they realized that their check sizes were too small um, because you'd buy one cup of coffee and then kind of leave so they've added a lot of uh, food and extra beverages as well as packaged products and all the rest of it so they've increased their their package sizes and now because they're selling food as well they don't only get morning traffic they get lunchtime traffic they get afternoon traffic and and that's now footfall um, so yeah just really innovative doing the right thing and just massive uh, again y do you as an investment house own or do you have exposure to Starbucks so we don't specifically have exposure to Starbucks it's always looked a little bit expensive and even now um, I mean what we look at the share price I don't think we've yeah. got so there we go mm. but that being said, there's been a little bit of weakness of late. It's been kind of flat over the last year or so. Um, so this might be an interesting buying opportunity, um, especially, I mean, the share price came under a little bit of pressure when um, Howard Schultz um, first announced that he would be stepping down as CEO. I see it's recovered around yes, 8% over the last clearly. month on the screen um, but still it doesn't look that expensive um, from a PE perspective and if you look at it on a forward PE basis um, that forward PE of about 23 times seems like a lot but it really isn't that much to pay for a quality company like this Byron mm. a glowing <laughs> report from <laughs> Chantal I don't know if you I can actually add, add to, to the positivity <laughs> there yeah I just think we see we've seen a PE unwind there because the businesses continue to grow earnings you know double digit um, yet 
since the highs in 2015, beginning of 2015, we actually haven't seen much reaction in the share price. So this, again, is another great opportunity, one of the cheapest we've seen Starbucks in, in many years. Hot or not? Oh, yes. Should I just answer for you? He's hot. <laughs> He's hot. It's like a right. good hot cappuccino. Yeah. yeah. Just remembering that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I knew you'd give me a stick on this. Exactly. Yeah. And don't worry, before we even ask you this one, I'll tell you you're going to be hot on L'Oreal. <laughs>